Hey guys, <laughs> I hope you're good. I just came out of a meeting and um, you know when you have those odd meetings and you don't know why the meeting is odd and then halfway through you realize exactly what the oddity of the meeting is? So check this out. I'm sitting in a meeting with some partners and we're busy talking about constructing a specific fund that's gonna work predominantly for black entrepreneurs. One small problem, there are seven companies in the room. We're the only black fund or fund run by black people. How does that work? So on the drive back, I started thinking, have you noticed how, it, it certainly it seems to me, the only people that have been able to build patronage out of suffering have predominantly been white people building white patronage out of black suffering. Now, I know what's gonna happen after this, is some of you will post and call me racist. Some of you will say, obviously, we are disappointed in you. But I think there's a part of South Africans where we have to have the ability to have honest conversations, even if the conversations are uncomfortable. That's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is this is not intended at the, you know, well-meaning do-gooders who do good work. We see you, we acknowledge you, and we love the work you do regardless of what skin color you are. But this is a deep conversation aimed specifically at black people from all walks of life, whether you're in business or you're in the political circles or social circles or whatever, to ask ourselves the question, how come the people that construct solutions for black issues are almost always never black people? At a macro level, you could say, how come the people that construct solutions for Africa are almost always non-African? It's true, isn't it? I mean, they, they meet somewhere in Europe, in Paris somewhere, have a conversation about funding for African countries, and then we get the money. But the terms of the money don't work. It's true, too, I think, for this specific problem. So think about it this way. For those of you that are going to say that I'm racist, two weeks ago, I was in uh, Durban, and I was speaking to a business group of, of Durbanites, some of them are probably the wealthiest people in this country. The room was almost exclusively Indian, and the room was run by uh, Indian entrepreneurs who are third and fourth generation in the family. Kudos to them, they get it. Their businesses, their solutions, right? Um, but a few years ago, I had to, the opportunity to speak at a conference by uh, some Jewish business people overseas. In fact, it was in New York. The room was almost always, was almost predominantly Jewish. So think about it this way. How come the people, you'll never find a black person running a company that's 100% Jewish owned, or a black person running a company that's 100% Indian owned. This is not gonna happen, right? If the Jewish community has a specific issue, whether here or in, uh, in any other part of the world, the Jewish community will trust Jewish people and Jewish resources to fix that problem. So too for the Indian community and predominantly too for the white people. The only people it seems to me who construct solutions for black people are white people. We don't construct solutions for ourselves. Now, think about it this way. No matter how well intended the person on the other side of the table is, the truth is, their perspective of the problem will almost always be academic. Because they're not immersed in the problem. If you talk to me about lack of electrification or no access to water, it's not an academic issue for me. Yeah. Because Lang Kulekona, there were shacks just around the corner where people didn't have electricity and no water. So I, I get their reality. I get how they live. I get the issues that they have, right? It's a block away from my mother's house. But if I have to drive into a township to find the poor suffering blacks and then help the same poor suffering blacks by creating some sort of NPO and help them, then I'm not constructing solutions that are constructed by those people. The reason I'm going to tell you BE hasn't worked, and you can cut it any way you want, it hasn't worked, it hasn't. The reason it hasn't worked was because the first version of BE was about ownership and ownership transfer, and effectively what happened is the only people that benefited were the white banks and the white law firms. Because they got the money up front, they were paid to do the work. The banks did the financing, the law firms did the contracting. White banks, white law firms, black economic empowerment. Fast forward to version two of BE, and then we start talking about skills development. We start talking about enterprise development and supply development. Who are the largest enterprise development agencies in South Africa? Who gets the biggest budgets for enterprise development in South Africa? Who gets the biggest budget for supply development in South Africa? It's not black firms. Yet when you go to those agencies, almost all of them are aimed at black entrepreneurs. Now, I'm not making a passing a judgment about those people. I'm talking to black people. I'm asking, how come we are not the ones that construct the solutions for ourselves? It seems to me an oddity that I'm able to walk into a room and look around and I'm the only black person in it. Now, there's a big part of it about how do we enable and empower others, and I agree with you on that. But I think the question for you to ask yourself 
as a thought for me, and it's just a thought, it's a random thought. I'm sitting in my office and I just had a random thought, so we're just recording it. A thought is this. What are you going to do in your own space as a person to ensure that us as a people are able to speak for and represent our own interests? Because nobody knows what is in our benefit better than us. You can cut it any way you want. You can call me whatever name you want. But you cannot take away from the reality of the problem. How many schools that are built for low to middle income black homes are owned by black people? We send our kids there, granted. How many of them are owned by black people? So when we talk about um, um, bringing a sense of an Afrocentricity to education, you get the reason that the education system None of the education system nor the curriculum has Afrocentrism at its heart is because it's not constructed by Africans. Like it's not rocket science, right? Go go to any Jewish school. Go to one Jewish school today and show me one Jewish school run by a black person of any color, right? Black, Indian colored, and of, of any religious denotation. Find me one. Ain't gonna happen. Because they know that they nobody understands the issues of their community better than they do. And it's not about being exclusive in nature. It's not about precluding others from enjoying your culture. But there is a difference between coming in and enjoying what we built and just giving us the space to build it. And I'm arguing that I think black people need a space to just build for themselves. If you're a black entrepreneur watching this, how many, how many events have you gone to as a black entrepreneur that are put together by white companies talking to black entrepreneurs about entrepreneurship? I post, posted a video about a year ago that went viral. You guys remember where I said, how come there are no enterprise development agencies in townships where the black entrepreneurs are? And you can ask that about a thousand other things, right? How come uh, the, the schools that are intended for low to middle income black homes are not in townships where the population is? Yeah? How come uh, the banks aren't opening up more branches where the population is? They're still opening up predominantly in the towns and the suburbs. It's because I think we haven't thought through how do we ensure that we are the people building solutions for ourselves. They, whoever they are, can join us. They can help us. But they can't dictate the direction for us. My sense is so far, that direction has been dictated. It's just a random thought. Give me a comment. Tell me what you think. Cheers.